This is Carl of National RV Detroit, and I'm going to walk through your 2019 XLR Micro Boost model 25LRLE. Okay, I'm here on the door side of the trailer, walking towards the rear. <coughs> Excuse me. You have scissor type stabilizers that operate with a crank or a uh, socket attachment on the end of a drill. That's what most people use these days. You got some tie offs here for a dog or a cat <laughs> or your horse or whatever you got any farm animals you happen to have with you okay um, you have a power awning <coughs> excuse me again outside speakers you have a TV mount here antenna out here and power here so you can hang a TV out here the steps flip into the trailer um, if you're on uneven terrain you can pull this pin right here and the, the legs have holes in them, so you can adjust the length of the legs as needed. We have a quick connect for LP right here. So if you, you know, you want to run a grill or a griddle or whatever low pressure LP device uh, appliance you want to run, you can do it right here. All right, if that made any sense at all. I hope. Okay, so excuse me, the camera's all over the place here. So, okay. Um, this is your hitch. You have a, this is a Husky Centerline weight distribution hitch with built-in sway control. We'll show you how this operates. Um, when you come to pick it up, if you have to refresh your memory, uh, if, you're not, if you're not familiar with these, uh, you can always go to their website and follow the link to their hookup video. And you can always refresh your memory that way. Um, this is your dump hose here. This is the crank I just alluded to right here for your your stabilizer jacks. All right, right here. This is just a hookup for a solar panel. Um, if you wanted to get a solar panel that charges your battery, this particular one is a Furion. It would plug right into here. It just charges your battery. It doesn't uh, run the trailer or anything like that. Okay, you have a power tongue jack here, and this is the override for it. If you were to put a hex on there, one of your sockets on there. I can I guess I can't get a good picture of it anyway that's where you would do it you can override the crank if it fails you can just do it manually uh, if you get yourself into a, in, in an emergency okay you got a deep cycle marine battery two LP tanks Let's see what we got over here if anything that's just a reducer for your 30 amp power cord you can reduce it down to 15 amp Remember, if you plug this in at home, you can't run the air conditioner off a 15 amp service. You have to, you'd have to upgrade, or else not run the AC because it will pop a circuit breaker if you're only using 15 amps. Okay. All right. So these are your dump valves here. I'm going to pull this one to see if he has dumped this yet. Yes, he did because he was water testing it. Okay. So here we go. So you'll put your hose onto here, the hose I just showed you in the front compartment. The other end goes in the dump station. This valve here with the black handle obviously is for the black tank. The black tank holds toilet waste and water. The gray one is for sink and shower water. That's the gray tank. On a trailer, just if they don't have um, um, black and gray handle, generally speaking, the, the large one is always the black tank, the large valve. See, there are two different sizes. So anyway, you'll pull this one first and dump your black tank. Then after it dumps, you'll pull the gray tank and dump it. Obviously the reason you do that because the gray water is cleaner dirty water than the black water. So you're just going to clean out the toilet waste and water, uh, ho the hose from the toilet waste and water with the gray, which is sink and shower water. It's just cleaner dirty water. All right, so then, let me look down here to see if I, okay. So then if you leave the, your black tank valve open, then you go down here, just a ways down. This is the black tank flush. So first of all, it says on the sticker to always make sure that your black tank valve is open before turning on the water. You don't want too much pressure to build up. So you're gonna hook your hose up to here, you turn it on, and it'll actually spray the inside of your black tank out it'll spray the sensor so you get a good accurate reading and it'll just clean it out even better um, so that's a very good good feature to have so that's your black tank flush 
while we're standing here, there's two ways to get water in your trailer. The most common is city water. Most campgrounds these days have it. So you'll just hook your hose onto here, turn it on, and you're all set ready to go. Now if you go to a, a campsite that doesn't have plumbing on the campsite, you can pre-fill your tank. You have an onboard water tank. You can pre-fill it through here, and then you're just going to use the onboard pump. I'll show you where that's at when we get inside. But you would basically be pumping your own water. So everything will work just like you have city water, but it's uh, you're using the water that's in your fresh water tank. All right. Um, that is your service panel for your refrigerator. You don't really have to go in there. That's just for service. Um, your it looks like you've got a 30 amp or a 30 foot 30 amp core power cord right here okay um, this is your water heater inside see what we've got here okay so this one works on both gas and electric either or so um, the thing to know okay is there's a switch right here let me see if I can get a good picture of it you can sort of see it right there okay on and off rocker switch this that switch operates the heat electric heating element that's behind this cover here so to run it on electric you have to turn that on but you always have to make sure there's water in the tank before you turn it on it's very important okay now the switch the switch to operate the gas is inside on the monitor panel I'll show you that when I get in there also it's good to know that this is the drain right here for your water heater it's an inch and a sixteenth socket so get a six point inch and a sixteen socket if you don't have one to, uh, to unscrew that. And this is the pressure release valve, like all water heaters have that, that exact same valve, or pretty close to it. All right, so let me keep moving. Yes, okay. Uh, well, we're looking up, th this housing up there shows us that it's pre-wired for a backup camera. If you get one, uh, we carry them here, but uh, if you're interested, but you, no matter where you buy it, you have to get the Furion camera that fits in that housing. It's just a real simple plug-and-play deal, but you got to have the proper camera to fit in there, okay? Also, while we're looking up, you have to inspect your roof at least three times a season. So you're going to go up there in the spring, you're going to go up there in the fall, and then once in the middle of the summer, you walk around, uh, check all the sealant on the roof, make sure it's good and tight, no separation starting, no cracking. Um, and you just inspect it. Odds are you won't have to do anything for a long time, but that's why you're inspecting it because you don't know for sure. So three times a, a season you want to go up there and look around or uh, have somebody else do it, okay? You also have uh, lights back here, a light back here as you can see for, uh, for your, your deck when it's down or your ramp, whichever you're doing here. Okay. All right, so I'm going to drop this right while we're here right now. So let me see if I can... One second here with the camera. That's so why I just undid that one. And I'll undo this one here. Okay. Now this has got a counterbalance weight. You can see this or counterbalance spring. You can see the spring down here, so it's not heavy at all. One person can wrangle it without much effort at all. So I'll just pull on it. Sorry about my camera work, but I can't uh I can um let me see what I got here. It looks like it's still stuck because it's a while okay there we go so this comes down I'm just doing it with one hand now so it's not it's not heavy okay and inside we see Amanda my co-star <laughs> um, so it's that simple if you want to turn it into a ramp obviously you would just pull these pins one on each side and let it go down to the ground okay to set this up this particular one is pinned, so you have to remove these pins here. Okay. Right here. And then you go to the up position like so. But we're gonna slide it up a little bit here. Okay, I'm going to have to set the camera down for one second here, so bear with me. I need two hands to do this.
Okay, there you go. As you can see, I've just put it in the upright position. Then, you're going to replace these pins to lock it into place. Hopefully you can see that okay. I'm just, obviously I'm using a cell phone here and I'm not doing the best camera job. But, so you'll do that in both places to lock it into place. And that's all, very simple. The other side works the same way. Okay, so let's move inside. Um, first we'll just look in this way. Um, your table obviously is freestanding. You can collapse it and put it into storage. Your, uh, you could turn the two couches into a bed, right? Or into two beds for that matter. And you can put them up into a storage position also so they're up and out of the way so you can get your four-wheeler or your dirt bikes or whatever you, whatever you have inside. All right. Um, is there anything else to be seen from out here? Of course, you got tie-offs all on the floor in several spots to tie your stuff down. Okay. All right, let's move towards the door here. All right, so inside we go. We're just cleaning it up for you, obviously. Get it ready. Okay. So, the, um, these, obviously, these cushions come off. You've got bed, and then you can flip them up and, and strap them into place here to get them out of the way. Okay, this, the only thing you really have to know about this is that, well, you gotta look at the other side to start off with. There should be a yellow, there it is. So you're just gonna push this to the right, and it'll unlatch the table, and you collapse it at the hinges. That's all. It's very simple. Also, I'm seeing something here. This, um, it looks to me like it's it's been uh, scuffed or damaged, but we will replace that for you, no problem. So, when you uh, see this video, you'll you'll know that uh, I'm documenting this. I've just seen it myself. We got the same thing over here. So why that happened, I don't know, but we will replace that for you, no problem. That's a, that's a warranty issue, so. No need to worry. Okay, so let's come over here to the monitor panel. If I can find it, that is. So we got lights here. Okay, that's uh, you got a, a blue LED strip underneath your power awning. Alrighty. All I have to do is keep looking until I find it here. So here's your awning, uh, extend and retract. So I'm just gonna push extend. Let me switch hands with the phone here. I'll push extend, out it goes. You just roll it out basically until you see the awning tube. I'm not gonna go all the way out with it, but you unroll it, it goes out eight feet and you'll see the, the, the canvas will, or the fabric will unfurl and then you'll see the, the uh, tube there, you know you're out all the way, all right? I just don't wanna leave it out because we got people driving by here, I don't wanna anybody to hit it or anything. The important thing is you can't you can't leave this out unattended. So anytime you leave the campsite you roll the awning in because the wind can come up very quickly and damage it in just an instance and then you got a headache. So uh, if you're not there basically you're not going to have to uh, you're not going to leave it out. Okay this this is a mount for your TV obviously and this is the signal booster for the digital antenna. It should always be green when you use the antenna. Just leave it on. That's, the, that's what most people do. Your radio, you uh, basically, um, it's a, uh, an AM FM radio, obviously. And um, also, you have Bluetooth on it, so you can hook up wirelessly. I'll leave this sitting here so you know which is yours. This is a DV7200. It'll appear on your, your phone or your tablet when you're looking for it on the Bluetooth section um, of your phone. So. Uh, you also can stream off this USB stick here, so you can take all your favorite albums on, on one stick. This is an HDMI in. So let's say you wanted to set a, one of those little game machines or a Blu-ray player or a combo. Uh, you can put it right here and go straight into it right there with the HDMI. And there's, and there's a, um, I guess there's, I guess you would have to plug it in up here actually. But keep in mind, um, if you wanted to, there are patches on the back of this, so if you wanted to, you could, you could have it modified so you could put, permanently put a DVD player there 
and just patch it into the back. That would probably, that's an option also. All right, so right now we've selected AC. You can't run the fireplace and the air conditioner at the same time, um, but you don't need to, obviously. So you have to select one or the other. Your fireplace, basically, you can change the look of the fire. You can um, set the fan speed zero, off, low, and high. So it's a really good space heater. Um, you can set the thermostat. So it has, there's a lot you can do with it. And it's a good space heater. runs on 110 AC. And so you basically, you don't have to, if it's a cold morning or cold uh, evening, you can just run it while you're sitting here and you don't have to use up your LP. Okay, and this is your thermostat. Right now we're on auto, cool obviously, but you just light it up that way. Then you're going to just scroll through a furnace, off, fan, auto, cool. Um, keep in mind there's a lag time for, for all these things turning on and off, about five seconds. So if I would have stayed on furnace and I turned the heat up, obviously, uh, for five seconds, this the AC would have shut off and then that furnace would have kicked on. So there's always a lag time, right? Your, your, your refrigerator is a gas absorption Norcold refrigerator. It runs on 110 AC or LP gas. The only thing to know is you turn it on right here. It always seeks out um, a, uh, electricity first. So well, as soon as you turn it on, it's going to look for 110 AC. If it can't find it, it'll automatically switch to gas. Right? Um, if you're using the AC power and it has a power outage in the middle of the night, it'll automatically switch over to gas for you. If you want to pull it down the road, you're not plugged in, so it'll look for power, it won't be able to find it, it'll switch to gas. So you can pull it down the road on gas. So um, it's very simple, but it does the trick. And you got a you actually got a nice size freezer also, which is good. Okay? Alright, so your range hood works like any other range hood, sand and a light. Your I don't know if the gas is on here, so I'll just walk you through this. Basically you're gonna turn it to light and then turn this sparker clockwise. The gas is shut off right now, so it doesn't light, but you got the three burners. Then obviously you have a, a, um, a microwave underneath that works like any other microwave. Although this is a convection microwave. All oh, right. So it's actually uh, has a convection feature too where it's, it circulates the air. So that's even an upgraded microwave. Always have your your cover down when you travel, your, your range cover down or else it'll, it'll break for sure. Okay, this belongs to our cleaning woman so that's, that's not part of the trailer. She just likes to listen to music apparently. But then who doesn't? So uh, your, your water pump for the onboard water is right here. To light your water heater on gas is right there. Always make sure there's water in the tank. Uh, this pump is also used for winterizing. Uh, you, this has to be winterized so keep that in mind. And then you can check your levels, your battery's charged, fresh water's empty, black water's empty, gray water's empty. You can see it, it, it graduates up in one third increments as they fill. So when your black and gray tank get past two thirds, you're gonna have to start thinking about dumping it. Okay. All right, so let's see here. Let's see if I forgot anything here. Yep, there's two things I forgot already. So this device here is your power converter. It converts 110 AC down to 12 volt DC or over to 12 volt DC. Um, so this side is the AC side. You got regular household circuit breakers here, and they're labeled. Um, okay, then it converts the power to 12 volt DC over here. You got 12 volt fuses. Um, if these ever were to blow, they'll actually light up, and you can see them through this perforation here, so you know it blew. Also, this is a battery tender, so it'll sense how, as long as you're plugged in to shore power, it'll sense how much energy your battery needs up front and it'll act accordingly. If it's low, it'll send a 10 amps or whatever. If it's charged, it'll just trickle a couple. So it's, it's semi-intelligent in that sense. Uh, this is your carbon dioxide and LP gas detector. I'll set it off for you. It'll go through two self-tests, one for LP and the next one for carbon dioxide, and then back to green. There we go. So now it's green. It should always be green like that. But if this goes off, you gather everybody up, take them outside, Go up front, shut the gas off at the front, and then figure out what's going on, okay? Um, also, if it beeps really, really slowly, it's telling you your battery's low, all right? But I'll say again, it should always be green, and if not, you get it serviced. It's very important. Okay, so I think we've gone through everything up here. Let's go into the bathroom. The only thing, the sink and the shower work like any other sink and shower. 
this GFCI, all the plugs are wired through it. So um, even the one on the outside would be wired through it. So if you're using a coffee pot outside or whatever and it pops, you'll reset it here. The thing to know about the bathroom is the toilet can't be used dry or without chemical. So you got a foot flush lever there. And basically, when you plug your trailer in, you hook up the water, you'll come inside. Uh, your black tank is empty, right? So you're gonna put some chemical right in there, whichever chemical you use. And then you'll step on the pedal and water will come swir swirling out. And you'll stand on the pedal for a few minutes or as long as it takes to put a gallon or two of water in there. There's no way to tell that exactly. It doesn't have to be exact. The thing is, it has to have chemical and some water in there to start off with. Um, so that's important. Also, when you flush it, it defaults about this, this full. So if you just step on the pedal a little bit, uh, it'll activate the water valve, but it won't open the trap. And so you can fill it as high as you want before you use it. You just have to do that each time. All right, also, this has a fan in the vent. Always use the fan with the shower. You don't want to let the humidity to build up in this trailer because they're built super tight now. Nice size shower. Okay. Okay, so last but not least, we're in the bedroom. Let me get some light here. So the, the things to know, obviously there's some storage under the bed. It's like a foot locker. All right. Um, you have antenna out here plus power plus a TV backer right here. So you can hang a bracket right there. The thing about TV brackets, if you're going to get a swivel or a, or a swing out bracket, try to spend the extra money and get one that locks into place. That, were, that way you don't have to hang straps or anything to keep it from flipping around when you're driving. Um, so it's better to, to just get one that locks into the closed position or retracted position, whatever it's called. So the, the other thing to know, this is your escape window. So all you do is pull this up like this, push this through. Of course, you'd push this all the way out, right? Then um, you would grab a hold of this little red knob and you pull the screen out and then you can just roll right out, okay? So tuck and roll. <laughs> and land right on your feet so okay I think I've covered everything then so uh, if you have more questions obviously you can talk to us about it there's plenty of online videos by the various manufacturers also all the every appliance in here has a, a manual in this packet so you can you can get information that way also the manufacturers make online videos so between all that information plus talking to us we can always help you out and um, if you have any issues with it you just call and make a service appointment and we'll uh, we'll take care of you okay we're easy to work with and uh, we're trying to always try to do better at customer service so give us a call um, okay well thank you very much and uh, don't forget to inspect the roof three times a year and always bypass your water heater before you put antifreeze into the system thank you